have at our first MPEG seminar speaker of the, of the semester, Emanuele Mechila. He did his PhD in at the University, worked on LCD and CDF, and is now transitioning to work on Super CDMS at the University of British Columbia. And today he's going to talk us about the wrap up work at CDF for resonance and digits. Okay, thank you very much, and good morning. I think you're the last PhD from CDF. I probably. Last wow. Yeah, we have the first one. You were one you were. Well, it turns out there was one before you, right? I don't You're the first one everyone remembers, but I think there was a, a mini. Yeah, one. there was a guy from the ten. Did he? I think George I don't know. No, I think he was number four. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sure, he was number two. Oh, yeah, two. I, and I think. I was number two. But didn't, didn't we decide that that was not actually CDF or something? Some we. we yeah. I don't know, yeah. Been working on. Well, the first and the last. Just the last me is. But all the good. What? There's no more. So we have no more. Uh, Chris Clark, but I don't think he's going to be. It could happen. Good. Well, we should take a picture then. Yeah, the first first of my CDF thesis. <laughs> <laughs> I did prove it. Yeah. Emanuele is part of the excellent exodus that the CDF has been stealing from CDMS. I see. Sorry, guys. So, uh, thank you very much for having me. It's a real pleasure and honor. And today, yeah, I'm going to just talk to you about the search for resonance in each app, CDF2 experiment. It could sound a little bit strange that it's very young, or since seven years since the telescope shut down with Tickle and lost CDF data. I'm going to show you how much really useful and beautiful physics can still be extracted from this bad data that's been collected on telescope, and how unique were the data that can be even today complementary to what is done now at the NXO. So uh, I would like to start giving you this picture of what I think right now, the standard model. So you know, we have this elegant and fascinating theory, it's a standard model. Uh, but what's happening nowadays is just that every effort that we are making, uh, every measurement we are doing, it really seems to conform to the will of the standard model. But we know that the standard model is not the final answer for all our questions. There are still many open questions. So what's that matter? What's that energy? What's the solution of the background symmetry? What's the solution of the active problem? And as I said, today, nearly all the experiments in particle physics are trying to focus on finding a sizable air quantity cracking in structure. So this is why I, you can really picture standard models a tie right now. It's really trying to push me down. And there are, but there are many uh, possibilities and there are many tools to try to defeat this pattern. And one of these is the search for uh, and, uh, the search for resonances. So what, what, what's it, what is the search for resonance? So you, you go to a glider, uh, you build a nice detector, you try to collect as much data as possible. So what you do is to uh, field, select, one of some final states that you think can be really interesting, like, I don't know, by photon, by jet, by new, and so on. And what you do is you plot and your distribution of your data as a function of your mass. So what you expect to, to, to see, if everything is kind of model compatible, is you are supposed to, to, to see just some combinatory background, which is, and distribution should be just like an exponential fold. Um, but what's happening is that if you see some strange structure in your data, like a bump. This means that you are really seeing something, some physical going on. Um, and this can be the derived, the derived sign of a new particles that is decaying into this final state of your select. And so in this way, you are really sensitive to any new physics treatment. And just to make you understand how powerful is this, uh, is this method, I just want to remind you the 750 GB diphoton access that occurred two years ago. So this is the plot of this uh, to 750 GB resonance. And you see there was this little bump from Atlas, which had the local signature of about 3 sigma. And also CMS, almost, I mean, if you really want to see something, you see how to use all SS in the same region. And what happened is that two months after 
the uh, release of this uh, result to more than 250 theoretical paper came out. This is to give you the idea of how powerful is the resonance factor. If you really see something like that, and then of course, as you know, this was just a statistical population. But if you really see something that you means that you are really improving the physics. But apart from this, uh, resonance, uh, resonance angle is also uh, really interesting because at the same time you can also probe standard model. Um, for example, you can look for resonance that you know that there, like the Z or the W, and then you can use this uh, resonance as a standard angle to calibrate and validate your analysis. Uh, in particular, for uh, what I'm going to focus in this talk is the resonance in BB bar uh, final state. And BB bar final state is very special, um, both from a theoretical and experimental point of view. In fact, from a theoretical point of view, as you know, if you have a scalar particle with kind of like uh, couplings, that is going to decay mostly in BB bar. One example for all is the Higgs boson. Higgs boson decay in uh, BB bar final state in the 60% of the time. And even if it, of course, it is the dominant uh, decay mode, the observation of the X to be bar is just a matter of plasma. So you see, this is something really trendy, it's really up to date. Uh, but again, uh, this big bar final state is, is, this is also for any for many models beyond standard model. Because again, if you, any, if you have many, plenty of models where you can predict a scalar to the scalar with you have a coverings, and then you miss that it will decay more, mostly in big bar. Or you can go search for C prime resonance or new models where you predict some um, scalar dark matter mediators. There are many of them. And anyway, the BB bar final state is really interesting even for uh, when comparing with the generic digest final state. And you, uh, this is, so this is why BB bar is so special. But it's special also from a, a experimental point of view. Um, if, if you look at this plot, you can see the production error section as a function of the energy of the collider. Um, and you see, if you are looking for uh, the jet final state, you are mostly the of this guy, which is the total cross section, which is huge. And this means that you are really collecting and you have to deal with all the possible backgrounds from the CD, which are just huge. Instead, if you have the possibility to identify in your final state B jets, what you can do is go down here. And so you, for example, for the exhalaton, you are gaining something like four order of magnitudes. So you are gaining four order of magnitude in your background. And this means that your uh, your sensitivity is going to improve because of course your signal over background ratio is going to improve. But from another point of view, uh, for uh, atom collider, one problem is that you at each uh, collision you are creating many, many data. And you cannot save all your data to disk because it's just impossible to keep up. And so uh, this means that if you want to search for final generic uh, jet final state, uh, you the only thing that you can do is to really set really high threshold of the energy of your jets. And if you do so, it means that you are sensitive only in the real high mass uh, part of your spectrum. But uh, if, if you want to try to push and to search for also low mass, by jet final state. The only way to do that is to try to uh, identify the jet final state already on your uh, online level. And this way, if you can identify the jets, then you can gain this factor of four order of magnitude. And so you can try to lower the energy threshold of your jet and try to be sensitive also in the low mass scale, which is as much interest as the high mass scale. So uh, just to give you the state of art right now for the uh, searching the uh, bar final state. So LEC first initially uh, focused on high mass resonances. And this is why, of course, uh, you have this new collider which reach uh, energies that has never been reached before. And so you are interested in high mass part. Also because this is where you are supposed to see some Suzy particles that, as you know, not, uh, not that, but you know, everything I have to now has been uh, found everything to be some of the compatible. Uh, but from another uh, point of view, the problem is that, as I already told you, the low mass searches are really difficult because of all the huge background from this thing. And so going down in mass is really trigger-bound. 
And you can see the result from Atlas, which is uh, really, really this year. And you can see the search for the bar time state uh, from 0.6 to uh, 6 dB. And you see the images in well within the uh, two sigma band. But anyway, you see the search started as 0.6. And this part actually is called the low mass. So from 0.6 to 1 plus 1. This is, uh, but what, what we try to do, what we want to do is try to also give a look at this part. So before 0.6, uh, down to 50 dB. It's something that actually is not really constrained right now. So it would be neat to look into this part. So what if we miss something in the low mass region? Uh, and right now, it seems that really some new interesting is coming up for the research in the uh, low mass region, probably also because of the lack of new results at high mass. But also because new uh, techniques have been developed, probably the things I correlated. And in particular, I think uh, new developments have been uh, developed for a new new development has been done uh, for the light selection. So there are mainly two uh, different ways of doing analysis for low mass region and LSC right now. And one is to perform this what you call a scouting, which is a trivial tri level analysis. Uh, so right now we have the CMS and others have the possibility to have uh, already at our main level uh, offline quality uh, stuff, uh, reconstruction. And so this means that you already can perform your analysis online. And this means that you can discard most of your information so that the size of your data are becoming uh, lower, uh, smaller, and then you can really try to uh, collect much more data. And so going down on mass. Another way to do so is not to trigger on your signal, but on the initial state radiation. So if you have your, no, your VIX that is produced, is produced with a really high energetic radiation, you can trigger an initial radiation. And then what's happening is that your resonance that came to uh, digest is producing the boost energy. And so what's happening is that the two jets are matching what we call the fat jet. And what's, you can see this uh, result, also this result I'll talk about uh, this year. And you see uh, from CMS, uh, you can see that it is the view bar from states that has been collected using this technique. And you see now, we really come down to 40 degrees. And you see that we have the W and the Z uh, resonance that will remind you that uh, you can really uh, validate your uh, analysis technique uh, using something that standard model you know that is there. And it, this data has been set the first inclusive X to be bar limit at LAC. Um, but you can also do uh, use this uh, technique to, to, to search for new pieces of particles. And I think they use the same data set to perform a uh, resonance hunting. And you see that uh, between 50 and 350 GB, everything is like uh, standard model. But in this uh, context of uh, low mass uh, invariant state uh, search, it's where CDF data can still have a role. When you are going to back then. So that's multi chats. Oh, this one? This is uh, the bar, yeah. So it's W and then the Z and the Z bar. Yeah, uh, because uh, the thing is that this is W going to a QQ. So this is four jets. Uh, no, it, so you have, uh, you trigger on this integration, and then you have, you reconstruct to the jet. But I think the point is here that uh, the uh, Pitagi labyrinth is not really performance, so you also have the W going to Kukulon. And you are event from this. It's just really impressive. Yeah, it's come a long way. But this is a kind of machine in the field to the ASL, so you can do it. The first thing for WT or HIF, the AK for now. It could. I mean, yes. it's good. See, if I never saw this, it was possible. Yeah. yeah. I did it for the first part of my thesis, for the W prime to WZ. I didn't know that. We were doing we were looking for really high mass W primes. We looked for very, the problem is that we didn't have any sensitivity, so I dropped it. Because it was clearly going to be awesome. It's just, there were just no events. 
the efficiency was high, the acceptance, the efficiency of the acceptance high on the cross section was just so low. I was aware of that. Ah, it was cool. All right, sorry. Yeah, it's right. just really clean and pretty. I like it. Sorry. Yeah. Right, you really have to do this, this kind of neotic thing to that, you know, things to feel really want to go a certain way because really, it feels really nice. And I do that, I think that. Do you end up with the drop in the foot? Sorry? In the left foot? Is yeah. the drop here? Yeah. Oh, this yeah. drop? Yeah. Uh, this is due to the, from uh, what I understood, um, this is due to the algorithm that is used for. Uh, Reconstruct the file chain because here there is some different network uh, that are used in the So this is just an artificial business due to your reconstruction. Okay, so uh, Cilia. Uh, Cilia has here uh, an important role when looking at low mass projection of lenses. And for those who know, doesn't know, so Cilia was one of the two experiments of Tevatron, so there was Cilia. Zero. And uh, Tevatron was uh, this uh, proton to proton uh, collider which ran at an MD of uh, 1.92 TB at the center of the mass. Uh, so this, is, this was the picture of CDF. And the structure actually is actually similar to what we have now, I will see. So um, near the interaction point, we have a tra tracking system to reconstruct the trajectory of the charged particles. Then uh, a kind of uh, electromagnetic and learning can be emitted to reconstruct the energy of the particles and reconstruct the neutral particles. And in the other part, we have, we have uh, all the neutral mirror system for reconstruction of neutral particles. So, uh, if we want to uh, select data, uh, we object the final state. So, a jet that has been initiated by a big board, what we need is some. Jet tagging algorithm. <coughs> and this is this is was this was done as CDF and even right now I will see. Uh, exploiting the fact that when a B uh, a B core patronize is gonna to um, a B hadron is uh, created. And what happens is that the B hadron in your detectors is gonna fly a little before decay. And what's happening is that the uh, the, 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 the charged particles that are uh, coming from the decay of real B hydrons, uh, they have this, 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 this is what we call these phase trunks. Because they we have a large impact parameter to respect the primary vertex. And moreover, what's happening is that your displaced trucks, when you um, they will form a secondary vertex, will which be uh, displaced from the primary vertex. So what you can do uh, for uh, Identify each actor is to search for display tracks which form the secondary vertex, and then you ask that your secondary vertex to be within a jet cone. And so, if a secondary vertex is found inside a jet cone, then you're having that jet. And this means that there is a high probability that that jet is being uh, initiated by a people. And you can see that the algorithm that did that at uh, CDF was called the second PX tag uh, algorithm. You can see here the efficiency as a function of the energy of your jet, and you see that we must uh, have really nice efficiency of the order of 40% with a 1% of failure rate. So the performance was really good. We can really uh, identify features. But this is not enough. If you really want to uh, do an, an analysis and search for BJ in final state, and you really want to push down your mass uh, search, that mean, it means that you have to perform the tagging already at the trigger level. Uh, and this is a, really the key of the success. I'm going to stress you many times about this. Uh, and at CDF, it was possible. And in particular, CDF was the first experimental collider to develop a trigger system that has a B tagging of the underlying. And how was it done? So in uh, uh, 2008, uh, this new uh, trigger, which was optimized for uh, high jets, uh, high energy jets, was implemented. And it collected a total of 5.4 meters spectacular of integrated energy. Uh, it required uh, two kilometer jets with an energy of uh, 15 GB, of the transfer energy of 15 GB. And one of the two jets was required to, uh, to be online, which means that it was a request that, to, that to, it 
it has at least two tracks, so displaced tracks, which form a secondary vertex. And we are really tight selection on the displacement of secondary vertex. What happens is that you can really have a high purity on your uh, finite inject uh, sample, and so you can really push down your uh, angles of pressure. 15 GB is really low for the jet. Uh, right now, I see, I think, that the limit for the jet is on the order of 100 GB. So it, we, we really have the possibility to, to go down the mass. And the interesting thing is that, that the data has been, that has been collected from 2008 to 2011 has never been analyzed yet. So we were really sitting on treasure because we have this uh, sample, a rich VJAT, a really unique, and maybe some new physics could be behind it there. And just nobody had the time to look at this. So what we decided to do is to open this box and to perform some analysis. And in particular, what we uh, tried to do first is to uh, measure this to the cross section. So as I told you before, you can use uh, less science also to uh, search something or standard model to validate your analysis. And this is what we did. We used the ZBB virus and the kind of validate the nice thing. And also we can uh, measure the digit in this case. And so uh, really you can do some math with this SMS. Then we also uh, test the inquisitive to the device signal at the Tevatron. And this is the first time that Rubulon uh, fusion for X has been studied at the Tevatron. Uh, and lastly, we also, when everything has been validated, we look for some new physics uh, signal. And in particular, we focus on uh, the production of a new scalar particle phi, which uh, came to be jets and also produced in association with another uh, third big work. Okay, so let's get started with the uh, measurement of the increases in the light section. So, this is what you expect to see. So, you have this huge background due to uh, multi-jet uh, production from uh, TCD. And on top of it, we, you're supposed to see like a banana with a bar. But of course, it's not real life. This is not what you want. Because first That's of all, it's going to almost zero. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is, this is me just growing. So, uh, so what clearly I don't have an intuitive sense of statistics. <laughs> right. it's, it's too good a fit. Yeah. Uh, so the, 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 the thing is that, this background is not going to be. It's not going to be just a screenshot test because uh, you have to take care of all your acceptance, your retargeting, your trigger effects. So this is not going to be a simple screenshot test. And moreover, this is not what you, your signal is going to be. Uh, your signal is going to be a really broad resonance, and you're going to. This is just impossible to see by eye. You really have to perform a really statistical analysis. Um, and moreover. Uh, you cannot just use your Monte Carlo simulation to describe your background because uh, it is, this, is, this is not good enough. You cannot really trust it. Or oh, anyway, you are in this business of two many systematics in your analysis. And you, you just don't, don't have any possibility to see for this small guy. Uh, so what we decided to do, it was the only possibility, possibility was to use some data-driven technique analysis. So uh, which are the main backgrounds? The main backgrounds are the Digit page from QCD to the Antares, and this is already usable. You can do nothing about that. You are selecting digits, and so you will have digits from my state. And this is going to be the most unitary background for digits. Then you have also another background, uh, which is when you have two jets, two the both of the two jets are tagged, but one of the two jets actually has been mistagged because it was initiated by the RC or the light work. But you have tagged, but by, by mistake, you have tagged it as coming from a deep fork. And so you have these two kinds of backgrounds. And how we proceed to, uh, so what we would like to do is to have some templates where, and uh, using these templates, we can fit our final uh, data set and also try to describe the composition of our sample. So not only have a descript description for our uh, backgrounds, but also know the different components of the our sample. So what do we do? So we start uh, selecting what we call the single part of the sample, which is a sample where just one part jet is selected. So uh, in this sample, uh, you have the signal, but it's much more difficult. 
because you're going to have really high backgrounds because you are asking just for one widget. And for the other jets, you can be whatever. So here you will have some zip bar, but it will be really good. More than, even much more, much, much less than zero point one percent. But the interesting thing is that in this sample, you are already including the bias of the tagging for the first jet. And as I told you, at the online level, we were requiring that just one of the two jets to be tagged. And if you ask that, if you require that your Tagged jet is also tagged online. You are, or in this sample, you are already including the biases to your chip. And of course, what you are missing is the tagging on the second jet. So what we can do, we can try to uh, simulate the effect of the tagging on the uh, second jet. And we can do that applying some flavor-dependent tagging probabilities. So we can go from we can use the Monte Carlo to uh, build this tagging probability uh, as a function of the uh, flavor, so it is a B jet, a C jet, a right or jet. And doing so, applying this tagging probability to the target jet of this single ta data sample, we can build the different background templates. So the background template for the UV bar, for the BC, and the DQ, where we queue in the network. So you have three different templates which describe all your backgrounds. And what you do eventually is that you go to your that double type of sample where you are looking for a signal. So you have the different templates for your background, when then you can simply use this template to fit your data. And including, of course, also your signal, you can extract your signal yield. And from your signal yield, uh, you can evaluate your uh, cross section and so on. So this is the how we proceed. So the first step is the selection of the single type of sample. So the sample where uh, you ask for, require just one online or blind type of chat. Um, but everything works if the target jet on this single type of sample is a real jet. So it's really been uh, initiated by big work. But we know that the efficiency of our pin timing is not 100%. Uh, but we can study it. Uh, in particular, what we can use is what we call the M type variable, which is the variable that is uh, built using all the tracks coming from the secondary variable. And these variables uh, carry information about the jet flavor because it carries information about the, the mass of the hadron that produced the, uh, the, the secondary vertex. Uh, so it, it reminds the, the, the mass of the hadron, the, the C meson, or for light work, when you, you target a, a, a light work, only if uh, your tracking system is just make some mistakes. And so what you have, you also expect for uh, light work is just to have a exponential fall because it's a problem. And um, so we um, use the Monte Carlo to have the template and we fit these variables uh, using data. And you see what's happening. Um, so we, this is uh, the final result. You see that we have some, is the, the red one is the real chat, uh, the blue is C chat, and the green the light work chat. And you see that there is like 75% of purity for the jet, which is not, not good enough. But as you see, uh, in the low, you have the only components, especially in the low mass region. And this is what you expect, actually, because, for example, you see for the C jet, you really have a drop at 1.8, which is more or less the mass of the metal. So if we put a cap here at 1.8 GP, we increase our, our, our purity from 75 to 96. It is exactly what we want. So we put a cut on this value. And so eventually what we have is this sample where the target jet, you are 96%, so most of the time, is coming from a real jet. And it is exactly what we want. So we have cleaned our single data sample. As I told you, we have to uh, simulate the effect of the tagging on that target jet. And to do so, we need some tagging probability. How to build that? Uh, we use Monte Carlo sample because we have to know which is the flavor of the of the work. So we bar, C bar, or light work Monte Carlo. And what we did is select events where you have at least two jets. And one jet you we tag for line of line is what we call the tag jet. Then any additional or uh, any additional jet in the event is called the probe jet. And we matched this probe jet. We know the Monte Carlo true. And so we know if this probe jet is 
from the orbits of the light orbit. And so what we eventually did is just to count how many times this project has been tagged by the uh, tagging algorithm. So in this way, we just simply count, we can build this target probability. And you can see here the target probability when you are uh, dealing with VJAS, CJAS, or light orbit. And what we saw is that for VJAS and, uh, and uh, CJAS, you have this, uh, we build this um, uh, tagging probability as a function of the energy and severability of the object. And you see, for as function of the energy, for VJAT, CJAT, you, you have what we expect, so a 2 knot core, uh, which reached a plateau at about uh, uh, 60 degrees. And the same thing for, for CJAT, even here, the statistics is quite good. But what is interesting is that you can see for lot for JAT, it seems that it's going to increase as almost linearly as a function of the energy. And actually, this is something that we expect, because as I told you before, you are going to target a light quark only if your tracking system is making mistakes. And if you increase the energy of your jet, you are also increasing the number of the tracks on your jet. And this means that you are increasing the probability that your tracking system and your retargeting system is going to make a mistake. So wrongly targeting a light bulb. So this is something that actually is expected and to be able to have the one Okay, so at this point we have everything we need. Uh, so we have the single type of sample that has been cleaned from the non component. We have the tagging probability. What we can do is to apply this uh, tagging probability to the target gen. Uh, but just one last caveat, because um, as I told you, on the online level we are tagging just one jet. And we saw that if this jet is the first of the second uh, leading jet in terms of energy, this is going to change the final uh, mass, environment mass shape. And so we have to consider when the capital B, which is the one that is also online of that target jet, is the first of the second in the energy. But this is something that uh, is just a deal with. And we also saw that some templates are, were really similar, and the final bit were not able to distinguish between them because the relation was high, and so we just matched together and assisted evaluate some systematics like this. But we had a rule. Because we have built our multi jet background template, and we also have the signals that we can extract from uh, Monte Carlo. So for the Z2B bar and X2B bar. And so we have everything. We can go to the double tracker sample and perform our field, which has been, uh, which we used a bin and maximum like field. We have to do it in and because we had two way too much data, it was not possible to do this. And what you see is this result of the field. So here you have our data. In uh, green, you see, um, in green and blue, you see the composition where of the, our multi jet backgrounds when you just have heavy quarks. Uh, you see that the field is not um, sensitive to any uh, background component when you, when you have that. Now, uh, this is something that we could expect, could expect because uh, the target, the, the target argument is but also the line level was pretty tight, and we also put a cut on the uh, environment of the tag. So it really seems that our sample, and our digest final sample, our title of sample is just made of heavy quarks. And in particular, you see this tiny slice, red slice, which is our zip to glass signal, which uh, seems really small, but if you go to see the numbers, you see that actually it's like almost 17,000 signal events. So uh, this, this is really, we, we, we are starting here from a sample of 120 uh, million events. So we are really talking about a lot of data. And we test, of course, the significance of the signal, including also the, the statistical and uh, systematic synthesis, and we find more than five signals. So this is really observation of this. Uh, but just remember years ago with no shock walk up and down telling people we can do this. <laughs> and now it's 2018 and finally we can do this. It's remarkable. Yes. You were you're actually able to do it. Yeah, we're ready. <laughs> we're good. And we also, of course, at this point, we also sort of look for the breaks in the bar, but we know that we have not. 
responsibility to do this because we expect 36 signal events over just the 125 GB. You see, we have uh, more than 10,000 events. Of course. No hope. And of course, this, the, 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 the feed is not sensitive. But everything really looks very well. And what we also can do is to uh, strategize in this game, which is a really important factor. And it is telling you how well your uh, correct BJX energy in event is uh, reproducing the actual detector response. And how we did it, uh, by simply by we go to we change the energy on uh, our z 2 b bucket plate, we're multiplying uh, each jet by the energy of each jet by the factor k. We vary this factor k between 0, 1 to 1.1, 1 .1, and then we repeat the fit each time for each value, different value of k. Here you can see the distribution of the chi square of this fit as a function of this factor k, which is the, uh, the your jet energy scale factor. And the minimum of this, you see that you have this nice uh, parabola shape, and the minimum of this, uh, the shape, is going to be your uh, jet energy scale. And the width of this, of this parabola is going to be your uh, statistical uh, uncertainty. And finally, we saw that your 0 0.91 with an uncertainty of 2%. So this is really close to 1, this is quite a good one. And this is what we expect. So this really means that CDF Monte Carlo is going to be jet with a uh, radius of 0 0.7 was well calibrated. I mean, after 20 years of calibration and effort, it's working very well. Are Pablo and Stano using this for the top for the new top maps? I have no idea. They hear your godparents, they ought to, but um, I hope so. I mean I would guess you could put this on La Posteriori rather than rather than have yeah, to have no do it as a which is uncertainty right now for just my scale. This so rather than going, doing it in situ. We are going to see two percent, I don't know right now which Just a summary of the systematic assessment that we have been evaluated, which can affect both the data and the scale of the cross section measurement. And you will see that all these kinds of measurements are dominated by uh, your target efficiency. So, uh, how well you can uh, calibrate your target response when you're on the Okay, just to give uh, uh, a summary for these results. Uh, so from the number of uh, yield, uh, from the zero bar uh, yield, we can extract the uh, cross-section time uh, to the bar ratio, we find a value of 1.11 uh, plus minus 0 0.2 now one. And we compare the result, of course, with an analog operation prediction, uh, which yield uh, 1.13, and you see we are quite different so everything is working fine. Uh, and also, yeah, we have this scale with a conservative uh, just for As I told you, uh, the field is not sensitive to uh, X, the X, but we can handle it. Still put an upper limit on this. Uh, we use the uh, still as method, and here you can see the result of the limit, and you see that 95% uh, of this level, we uh, measure a conservative limit, which is 33 times the standard model expectation with respect to the um, expected limit of uh, 46 times the standard model cross section. Uh, so, not the best limit, but it was one of this uh, production mode for the X, at least at the uh, Evertron. Uh, I, I showed you before that the first limiting for the increase mode for AC actually just for this year. So, we were really <laughs> trying to see who can get first the uh, So, uh, a paper describing this uh, measurement. Uh, out is the preprint is already available and I think within the month it will be also published here also. Okay now we can move to the last analysis we see which is the search for uh, new physics uh, new particle file which we came to report failure and produce with an issue condition of uh, third report. So we asked for a third report because in this way you can really 
cut from your uh, background from integers, and this means that you can really enhance your sensitivity for new uh, sigma, uh, for new physics signals. And especially we look for uh, the new particles are the bound in the invariant mass of the two integers, you know, a sample of three times. Right? And there are many theoretical uh, models that really discuss kind of uh, new particles. And particularly for in the minimal supersymmetric signal model X, you can really do something like this. Or also in dark matter models with large complex into uh, D quarks, like so that models uh, theater. But what ma makes this uh, analysis really interesting is that um, there was already a search for this uh, channel in the tabletron, both from CDF and uh, VCO. And this is their the final result. So this is the uh, combined result from C D F and zero. And you see that at around 100, uh, below 150, you have, we have this more than two sigma sets. And there was really a pity that nobody was just, it, could, it really could be something like this. Yeah. Uh, it was really a pity that nobody was really searching for this. And actually, CMS uh, published a result uh, using almost uh, 20 years to about a degree in the same channel. Uh, and they really pushed the limit up to uh, 9900 GB. But what about below 200 GB? Uh, you can see here the, uh, the mass spectrum. And you see that their QCD peaks is at about more than 200 GB. So it would be really difficult to create a new particles in this part of the spectrum, where you are really, really dominated by all your Systematics due to your, uh, your turn on core for uh, your trigger, your selection, your tagging, and so on. And so, and you can also see from, from, from the limits that it's just a small event of us. So, it was really, I think, necessary to use, uh, to look better in this part of the spectrum, and particularly using proton to proton. Uh, it was, it's really worth it. And in particular, what we were, the data that, uh, that have been used for the next analysis that I'm going to show you, uh, I want to stress that they are not the same data that have been used for this. There is zero, zero clock between the two uh, these two data. So it is really new. So that is a combination of the CDF data. Uh, sorry? That is a combination of the CDF data. Yeah, this, yeah, this is a combination between the CDF and the Both CDF data, CDF. Uh, mostly CDF. It was not right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was not right now. The CDF alone was more than two signals. Yeah, yeah, CDF was efficient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 question. Uh, yeah. We've been wanting to reproduce that and with a different data set for a long time. Tom, Tom looked at it with the, the updated data set and said, oh, there's nothing there. And it just didn't do anything. So what's in there? So what do you mean? You mean in the second half of the data? Yeah, yeah he looked. So this this was done with half the data basically, uh, and so he he redid you know, just quick and dirty redid the analysis for the second half of the data, and there was nothing there, and so he dropped it. And oh, and he, was, he was on his way results? out the door anyways. I, I didn't know it. Yeah, I don't think I knew that either. I knew he dropped it, but I didn't realize it. You didn't see it. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's one of the problems when you don't get a job, right? Yeah. You don't see anything and you don't have a job. Yeah, you're, 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 you're. Okay. Your vapor pressure, I don't know. So, what the so right. on, on 25. Yeah. So, uh, 25. Yeah. So, if we just looked at the data and didn't have the, the Monte Carlo model, then this looks like a bump, right? But this is just a product of the rising yeah. turn on curve with the falling spectrum. Yeah, exactly. So this is how Rubia discovered the top fork, right? Basically. Yeah. Okay. I think he discovered Susie this way also. Yeah. <laughs> Monte test was different. That turned out to be W to Town. Okay. Sorry. Okay, so well, what can we can do? Actually, we can we already have this as nice, uh, for the of the bar and the uh, A exam was validated and it was good, so why not we just repeat the same analysis? But of, of course this time we have to 
substitute the signal with the gamma and that with the triple. So we are going to have to search for a new signal not in a double target sample, but in a triple target sample. And we're not going to start with a, start with a, a single type of sample, but from a, a double type of sample. And this procedure can, can work because the target probability that's used for moving from uh, your starting point to your backup and plate are really projected. So they don't, they don't depend on the input points. It doesn't matter if it's the first, the second, the third chart. And moreover, we, uh, with the zero uh, bar analysis, we show that the double type of sample is mostly composed of uh, big, real big chats. And so the double type of sample can really be used as a template. OK, so uh, first of all, we uh, do some signal templates. Uh, in particular, we use a lattice signal template from a mass from uh, 100 to uh, 300 dB. And here you can see how our signal would look like as a function of the mass. And for the background template, we split it into uh, two categories, uh, which we call the DBX and XD. Uh, so it depends, again, on the energy transfer energy of the, uh, the jet. So this, this is going to change your uh, final uh, mass distribution. And eventually, we have six background templates. So you have the two jets coming from double type sample, and a third jet where you uh, simulate the, 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 the tagging it to be a B, a C, or a like jets. In this sample, we uh, know that we will have more contribution for light works. So we also introduce this uh, variable that we call X tag, which is real starting from the M tag, so it's carry information about the, uh, the, the flavor of the jet. And this way, we can really separate out uh, events where the target jet uh, is uh, a light work, a sea work, or a big jet. And you can uh, appreciate from this uh, plot where you can see the uh, Monte Carlo distribution of these uh, n type variables. Um, for, so in red for B jets, in green for C jet, and in uh, blue for light jets. And you see we, we, we uh, split these uh, uh, variables into the region. The first region where we are mostly uh, sensitive to light work. The middle region, we are, where we are mostly uh, sensitive to light quarks, uh, to sea quarks, and the high region where we are mostly uh, sensitive to the OK, uh, so we repeat the same procedure. We come out with a, a final uh, background template. This time, we found uh, two variables, so as a function of the invariant mass uh, and as a function of this new variable uh, X -tank. Um, we can also have the opportunity to really test the validating spectrum of the plate. And to do so, we uh, use um, a control sample where we have three target jets. But one of the, uh, one of the jets is negative tag. What, 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 uh, what does it mean? Uh, so a jet is negative tag is a secondary vertex is found from the tagging angle. But the secondary vertex is found outside the, con the, 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 con uh, the jet cone. In particular, when it is found on the other side with respect to the, the primary vertex. So this means that, uh, of course, these are target jets that are targeted but yet originally from uh, light works. And so we have this control sample, which is made of uh, two real jets and one, uh, one light force jet. And we use it all these templates, we can try to fit this control sample. And what we found that actually we just need two templates to describe this control sample, and the two templates, the two templates are really the two templates that include the light words. So this it was really a nice way to validate all our procedure. And so be sure that our templates are probably correct. Okay, so we have that really now we really have everything. Uh, we can search the signal in the triple target sample, so the sample with three target jets. And to do so, we have two variables. We give a two dimensional fit to the two variables, so the invariant mass of the two little jets and this new variable x. Uh, here you can see uh, the result of the fit for when we include a signal of 160 G. And you see that the, the, the fit is performing well, both in the two uh, variables. And here, of course, you will just have to put the projection into the 
variables because of this dimension. But you see that uh, actually there's no signals is, is found. And if you look at the numbers, you use like 150 events. So the question is, is this uh, signal really significant? Is this something we can visit there? To answer this question, of course, we have to introduce also the systematic aspect of this. And uh, this can affect both the shape of the normalization of the different plate. And again, uh, the main systematic uncertainties for this kind of search are the one related to the type. Because uh, you, you have three type chats, you have 5% of uh, uncertainties on, the, on just one of them, so it's 50%. Okay, uh, how we test so the final sensitivity? We can use a sequence method. And in particular, we can uh, set the limit as a function of the mass of the linear profile. Uh, so here you can see the limit for, the, uh, for this production uh, of this one of five in association with a p-jet, which came to uh, two p jet as a function of the mass. And you see that actually this red one is our certain limit, and this blue line is our expected uh, result. And you see that everything is well with uh, one thing. Also the uh, small excess here is well with so at this point, we can really say that the, uh, the previous result from CDF zero was probably just a statistical situation. Even before, because uh, if we compare, uh, I don't have the plot, but if we compare the, this limit with the limit that with this other limit, so the limit from the uh, from the combined result, yeah, this, you will see that our limit is sitting here. So we are really sensitive to uh, lower uh, production section. So we can really rule out this excess. OK, of course, from this, a paper is in preparation. And I hope it's going to be out within the year this year. It okay. will be out this year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, that, that does right to my conclusion. Um, I, I show you this uh, nice measurement for using a unique uh, CDF sample. It's, it really seems strange that seven years was really a sample, a so nice sample that has never been really analyzed. Uh, so this is something that we have. Um, how, how we proceed? We measure the micro section and measure the jet scale, so we evaluate a nice technique. We set the first limit of inclusivity to by production by the telephone to this, and then the most strange limit in this for this uh, uh, 5D to 3D in the uh, global scale. Uh, so this kind of, this measurement really uh, constitutes the series of the legacy of the resonance searching jazz. And uh, I really want to stress how an important and successful knowledge transfer has been done from uh, from Devotron and to the AC and something that actually is still going on. And uh, I really hope that uh, all the uh, expertise and, and the new results can really try the future for us and I hope this can be really bright. And so can make the standard model to defeat uh, a new era for particle physics. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, Manuel. Yeah. Are there any questions? So I was just thinking, you'd say the, you know, on the, that slide you're just on. Okay. So you say the, the inclusive H to B people are. And I, it just occurred to me that I don't know, did you cut out events that had, say, an electron or a muon in them? No. No, okay. okay. I didn't think so, but I, I suddenly wasn't sure. Yeah, I mean, this, this is very interesting. I mean, you can have whatever you want. Right. So what was the significance of the, the LHC? Uh, uh, LHC is something strange. They didn't put a limit, but they said they had one sigma significance. Uh, the, 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 this is it was strange. I mean, uh, I, I, I actually, of course, they were they were they weren't sensitive. Well, the so, no, so for the, the or this one. single case production of the LHC. But you mean for, oh, what is it? So for this measurement? No, that's, that's, that's not the Higgs search. 
Yeah, yeah this, this is has been used to also search things to be part. This, this is the result of the boosted things. Yeah, exactly. That's what it's a boosted Higgs. Higgs. Yeah, for the boosted. So it's a boosted Higgs off of something else. So it's a right. Higgs glue, essentially, or just, ah, it's just a boosted so it's Higgs. It's a boosted Higgs with the group, and as he said, the title is a B inside budget, B shell. Yeah, exactly. Then also um, the jet is either the or Higgs or something else. Yes. Uh, so you've got to get it. So you're dependent on the simulation of what it's recoiling against in your Monte Carlos. Yeah. I mean, it's it you're yeah. it's it's really a next to leading order. Yeah, but thing yeah, you're going to Yeah, no, it just means that you got to get that right way out at the tail. So basically, this same result as can do the version 3 to see the deputy. But they can attack that inside. So there's also the deputy. So what's the PT cut of the other thing? Uh, I thought it's a certain 200. Yeah, 200 is the right. Oh, okay. And the same is only a certain 500. And I think they try to pull it. So you have very low PT. Oh yeah. So that's purely a leading order, a next leading order yeah, this search, is, and this is a leading order. Yeah, search. because it's something that but, do a but of course the problem is that the CMS you have no way to go so down without using no, it. No, it. You have no way to do that. Really. But even CDI, we had the possibility to do that, but we know that the backgrounds are just too high. I mean. Uh, you're right, you don't win by pushing up the, the PT of the Higgs. Right. You don't have enough excess energy in the collision to give you that much of time. So, uh, At 125? Yeah, right. At the LHC, you got a lot. Yeah. 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 That's why you can do those things. Right, so the LHC is light. So they, they don't hold a limit. Yeah, exactly. They, they set the set. Was like one, one point twice. I was I was it was really strange because it, it was difficult to just then say what's the real something else. So, yeah. I, but that, I don't think that that's gonna be very systematic dependent. Yeah, yeah because it is I don't know maybe the, the ISR, right? And therefore the efficiency of your ISR cut, your, your ISR trigger really. I don't know, maybe Higgs plus glue or Higgs Q um, is, is well understood or well I think the systematics are good. Because if you miss a little bit of ground by SR, then you're going to get your trigger efficiency totally wrong. Well, your acceptance will be totally wrong also. That's why she did CM stuff from 500. Right. It's a way from the Yeah, right. If you push high enough, you can get away from the trigger efficiency, but you're still going to get your Monte Carlo. The question is do you believe the Monte Carlo at that time? So the scale is afraid we know. Okay. That's let's fair. say 300, 200. You do heaps plus photon? No. The photon cut that they can calculate the uh, energy scale. No, I'm not worried about the energy scale. It's, it's the simulation of. So the process is Higgs plus ISR FSR. So it's a pure next to leading order calculation. So the question is do we really trust? how the structure functions and the couplings work at that high PT. Uh, we have or what's the what's the measurement up to one PT and then the gradient of the QCP. Oh I guess it is an electric right, because if you have C plus jets you probably if you got W plus jets and Z plus jets, you're probably gonna get the PT spectrum right. So I think we yeah, okay. are good enough. Yeah, it's not great. The one comment that I have is that uh, more has a theory of G prime cup to B prime. Yeah, this is correct. Down to 200 G prime, right? That's not my theory. You have a theory. Yeah. But the, the final test is like a 3 B. Say it again? And, uh, the because of the anomaly, uh, let's see. And the uh, bus can move kind of on 
third year, the name of Draymond to explain. And I feel to be fine. The couple of years ago, I would need a lot of night coke, but it's kind of non universal. Oh, so you can't produce it? Uh, yeah, what you can do is yeah. produce that muons and then uh, look for a four muon signal. If one of the muons it emits the Z prime, and then that Z prime gives you another. Oh, God, this isn't the thing that what's his name was working on, is it? That 30 GeV thing from Olive? Oh, oh, no, no. no. <laughs> That's not that, is it? Arno oh, Hester? No, no. No, 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 these are, no they are, they are, like this technique has. Limits even recently from the LHC. They have, they have, was it four Bs? The recent uh, limits from CS? You have four B. Like at very low C C Yeah, but four B is like a couple of weeks production. Uh, no, uh, no, you, 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 you produce, produce bottom with QCD. Okay. And then one of the bottom limits is E prime. That thing gives you another two Bs. Okay, I see. And it's actually a pretty impressive limit at very low masses. There was a Somewhat similar sounding non universal Z prime that was uh, brought up to explain the top asymmetry. Okay. 2001 and 2012. Yeah. I wonder if Daniel Wayson's four jet limits are adaptable from there. He didn't have a B tag, so it's probably not sensitive enough. Yes, so or was that anchor? Wayson. No, uh, no, it wasn't anchor. So this was Daniel before his postdoc went to, his, his student went out to Google. He was doing these four jet things. He had a lot of said B tag. Yeah, but it was no B tag, you're right. It was no B tag. That was that is four tag. Okay. But here, Yeah, that what can you do? Yeah, I don't know. You might be amused to look at Arno Hester. He just they it's he just put it out in he got out he got it out out of the door in Olive. I don't believe it worth a damn. But you try to do the same thing also in basically when I was I know, I'm not saying. Yeah, I know. I'm not saying I believe it, but. Yeah, I mean, I, I heard Adolf made a public statement, which is basically meh. This guy doesn't do same sex things. Yeah, yeah, but he was trying to work with us on this. Oh, third guy. In certain ways, he's very sensible. The problem mm -hmm. is he gets excited and he says, Right. Yeah, but that's that, that's the problem. I mean, when you really want to see something, I know the problem. Yeah, yeah, the problem is he doesn't play the game right. right? Yeah, he does the right things and he talks in all the wrong ways. But that doesn't make him wrong. Right? It doesn't make him wrong. Right? What you want is somebody who's got something, thinks they might have something, to be their own worst critic, to be their own biggest critic, and he doesn't do that. But that doesn't make him wrong. I, I, I don't know. We, we were asking that question, and he just did an answer because he tries. He just doesn't have any help because nobody wants to work with him. He tried to bring it to CDF, and we tried the things we could do easily, and all the things we could do easily, we weren't doing them any sensitivity. We had to do some real work, um, and just nobody was willing to pick it up. Well, I did some quick and dirty analysis from his Alec plots. Yeah. And I wasn't convinced that he could have the sensitivity claimed in the Alec data. Yeah, but you can see yeah. what he's, I mean, you're, yeah, yeah, you yeah. the yeah. I, the I can see it test. Yeah, yeah. Whether I believe it's as many sigma as he says it is, you know, is it what he says it is? Eh. Yeah. Sorry, this is your talk. You, <laughs> no, 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 you no, gave no. a pretty talk. This yeah. is gorgeous. Yeah. Okay, well, um, Emmanuel will be around. He's in the fifth floor visitor office until the end of tomorrow. If you want to chat with him about either CDF or Super CMS. And if, if, and if you'd like to join him for lunch or dinner, please come catch me. Otherwise, thank you. Speak one more time. Thank you.